time to get Wurzel back up in the air. A little bit of creance line work. Now he's such a wally that normally every spring he sees his creance line and he's actually scared of it. I don't know if he thinks it's some kind of weird long skinny snake or what. So he may be nervous. And we do very short distances because he's a soaring bird. So just like when we get our kites flying again, there's no point going for 30 or 40 meters because their idea is to go straight up into the air. So we keep it short. We're just looking for a response before we let him free flying again. See if he remembers to go back. Yes, he does. Good boy. Wuzzle. So, although he's a scaredy pants, Wuzzle here is incredibly intelligent. And it's been a year since he's done this, and he's remembered straight away. Where's all? Not only has he remembered, obviously, to come for a little bit of food, but he's remembered to fly back to his tea perch. That's part of his training. And we normally start that by putting a little bit of food on the tea perch for him. And remember, this isn't his job. He doesn't fly to a tea perch. His job is to soar. We don't want this bird going backwards and forwards. It's kind of way too impressive. Go on. How nice to actually stretch your wings like that after a little bit of a break. I don't need any more distance. All I'm looking for is this guy's going to be responsive to the food on the glove. Wurzel. He's seen the rope now. He's seen the rope now. <laughs> Wurzel. So his initial reaction was all food, breakfast. And now his thinking brain's going in. And he's thinking about things that are making him worried. Wurzel. We'll give him <laughs> and we'll give him a big reward to end on. Remember, we showed this guy the food because in his actual flying, he, he does one, two or three um, callbacks down. His job is to stay on the wing and, and look impressive, not to keep flying to me. Where's all? Where's all? Where's all? I think he flew here. More to escape. All right. More to escape what he was looking at than he did for the food initially. So of course he's a, he's getting on a bit now. Probably coming up to four years old. Probably ten percent of his lifespan. And how nice to see you know how much he's learned since last year. Really straightforwards and backwards. Just get the grub and get on with it. Now he's still overweight for reliably soaring because remember when the birds you've got a soaring bird in a display you do actually want it to come back down when you cool it but we've got a little bit of a diet a little bit more training for a couple of days and hopefully back up in the air you can see how that huge bird of prey beak is used to tear and dismember his food not powerful like a parrot's for its crushing power but an incredible ripping tool and sort of intricate tool for pulling bones out and ripping and tearing at meat. Or you can just swallow it whole and say is any of that bother. You agree, P. Want a hand? <laughs> Want a hand? Look at how much it if I help you.
So Georgia's sort of animal mad, she's got her zoology degree and she certainly helps us out here at the Falkland Centre, no end. Zara! But she hasn't really done a great deal sort of from a falconry bird of prey sense. So whereas Kyle, her brother, my lad, is falconry mad, George is more into sort of different kinds of animals in many ways. So a bit of training going on here. That's for sure. And Zara, it's actually warm and so our birds sort of fly away, it's alter and their condition alters. The warmer the weather, the less they need to do and the less their appetite is. And Zara's two pound 10 ounces today, which is sort of three or four ounces over her sort of a really good falconry weight, that's for sure. But she doesn't know that today and she's happy just chilling out. Coming down for a little bit of food and basically giving Georgia a lesson in working with birds of prey. <laughs> Zara. <laughs> so if you can George, remember if you hold the food so she can't see it sticking up above the glove. Or she could get kind of Choosy on only coming down if she can see there's actually food there, which isn't ideal. So I hold it kind of ups yeah, upside down, hold it by the pointy end, and then have it hanging down into the part. Yeah, that's it. And then she can look in there when she comes. That's okay, didn't have an adverse effect. <laughs> the sun's in a bad place for now. Let's see what we can get. So Zara's having a bit of exercise. She's overweight, she's gonna have a little bit of a diet over the next few days. And she's going to try a bit of retraining really. So remember her original life was an experienced day bird. And then she became a, a pest control and falconry bird. A long time ago now. <laughs> she's looking at pheasants. Zara. They're out of season now, Zara. And here she comes. What I'm hoping to do is have her on my educational team this year. But we'll see, we'll see how she takes. Because some birds train to fly indoors really easily. And other birds, especially ones that have matured and, and that's not their job, it can actually make them quite nervous. So an indoor setting, say a school hall, is actually a really easy setting in many ways mentally. Because there's no visual stimuli past the walls and it's generally quiet and calm and not a lot going on. But it's also quite alien to a bird that's flown outside all the time. So we'll see, see how she gets on. We'll do a bit of training here at the centre and at home, indoor training. And we'll see if she adapts. And being a Harris Hawk, she probably will adapt just fine. Okay, right, it, but she just finds it straight away. She has got, I don't know, yeah, she got, she's got a little feather growing down over her eye, just a new feather, still a pin feather. And when she had the hood on, it's kind of pushed it down, she looks like she's got a gammy eye, doesn't she? <laughs> I'm going to have one more fly. And we'll go off then, we'll have a little walk with her. You stay there and I'll try oh. and... <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I don't know what the sun's doing in the... Shot. I don't know what Sarah's doing. Right. Naff all. <laughs> Is she looking? No, so she's Sorry. not looking at you. She'll be looking at the pheasants, relaxing and wandering along, yeah. That's the usual hand signal, turn your glove back to an. A little bit more of a whistle. Can you whistle? That's not bad. That That's it. It worked. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> yeah. She's a nice bird, isn't she? She's a good girl. <laughs>
We're just going to give Wurza a little spin out. First time free, really. There's no win, but we'll see how he gets on. Uh, just really one circuit, and I'll be happy with that, really, at this stage. Now, you might have noticed that in the local paper, especially if you're local to us here in Northamptonshire, that Icarus Falkery, along with Holdenby House, um, we put an advert in a paper to announce that in a couple of months we'll be applying for a zoo licence. Oh my goodness, what a stir. Little tiny cheapest advert we could get, and I'll tell you why in a second. One of the reporters of the paper saw it, decided to make himself an article out of it, a bit of sensationalism, and sort of gave the impression to Northamptonshire that soon there'll be lions, tigers and rhinoceros all roaming around the Holden Beer estate. That's not the case at all, and I'll tell you why we put a zoo licence in in a second, but let's see if this guy will fly. Let's see. So he's sat around, those big old wing muscles will be getting pretty rubbish and a bit flaccid. So we don't want to push him too far, but we'll give him a couple of circuits. Let him stretch his wings. If he needs the wind to help him, there isn't any today. So if you remember the hand signals, that means fly by. I'm not going to let him land if I can help it, so I've got to keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him. I'm keeping hiding behind the camera lady. <laughs> Because you want to go to a tree. Hey! Wurzel! Up! Oh, oh, he's going. Good boy. I thought he ditched in a tree. All I want to do is get him to realise the, the whistle and shout, Hey! Means, come back, your dinner's ready without him landing. The trouble is he's gone off the drop off. There's no wind to help him. I'm pretty sure he's gonna ditch. We'll go and see, come on. I feel like he can keep his height, but we'll see. I might have to send him back to the telemetry. Okay. In my van in front. I'm walking back to the telemetry. Got it? Don't need it. I just can't to come up that hill. <sighs> so we're both tied out. Whew. So what he did, as planned, as planned by him, I think, went off the drop off. Couldn't be bothered to fly all the way back up the hill. He knew where I was, and as soon as I got inside the tree line, he came back. Whoa, I don't want to break those wing tips. Same as last year. It's going to take him a good month to really get fit and power anywhere he likes on a wind free day. <sighs> Maybe two months for me. Oh. Ah, better flat. So, we've applied for, we haven't applied for anything. What we've done, we've put this advert in the paper because this is how antiquated nowadays, um, or, or these days as it has always been, um, things are, especially with councils and bureaucracy. So this is why we've had to apply for a zoo licence. Now you may remember we opened a few weeks few weekends rather back in the summer last year when things allowed just to let people come and do some stuff with us and see us see the see the animals in the gardens here at Holdenby House. We're only allowed to open our Falkery Centre to the public sort of on the day for seven days a year maximum. If you want to open an animal exhibit of any kind more or less for more than seven days in any year you have to have a zoo license. So currently we have to have an animals activities license so that our private bookings for our experience days can go ahead and we can do outside events and that kind of thing. But to allow people to come on site kind of through the gate, paying on the day as it were, the legal requirement is you need to have a zoo license. So we're, haven't, we're not applying for zoo license so we can have lions and tigers and goodness knows what. It's actually so that we can simply open at the weekends if we wish and allow people to come in and see us now we've obviously got a collection of animals birds of prey i think you know you guys come in to have a look round and see the birds that's quite nice especially when you've got the whole of the beautiful holdenby grounds and gardens to wander around as part of your sort of entrance fee if you like but of course us here at icarus falconry and raptor exotics we're not that passive when it comes to sort of education and conservation. It's nice you can come and see them and you can read the little notice boards and learn a little bit about each bird. But that's, that's, not, that's not what we want as an end product. 
So follow me and I'll tell you a bit more in a minute. It has to be scrubbed down. Really, it might not be too bad there though, because it's quite um, stuff against the stuff. So as much as, you know, it's, we'd love for you to come and see our birds and have a look around, we're all about, you know, something a bit more dynamic, aren't we? We want to educate you and we want to entertain you because we know if you have fun and you're entertained, you're going to learn stuff without even thinking about it and we're going to get some of the messages across and you about the, the plight of some of these animals and also just get you to love these animals because if you love them for sure you're going to want to conserve them so for us it's going to be all about the shows what we really want to do is once the c word's gone away a bit more obviously initial phase you can come and look around but once normality starts to come back a bit we don't mind if there's a crowd of you together by then let's hope let's hope normality returns like that because we're gonna fly birds of prey for you. And of course, I wanna entertain you with some other animals here, not just birds of prey, and get you to love those as well. <laughs> so as anybody that watches these vlogs will know, funds have been rather, um, I think if I said tight, that would be slightly under exaggerating. <laughs> There's a little bit of paint left in the stores. It's a beautiful day, absolutely stunning spring day again after the gloomy few days preceding it. So George is cleaning off the algae. This side of the centre really grows a lot of algae because it doesn't get a lot of sun through the deep winter. And Jack is now having to redo all the paintings she did a couple of years ago, but already you can see the difference further along. We need a few more days like this and we'll eke out every last drop of paint we can find. Get the place looking a bit ship shape for spring. So, we like to do displays and of course we're going to do the, the birds of prey displays. We're going to be themed, we're going to, not going to do sort of several birds at once maybe in a display, we're only going to do one bird at a time but a little bit of a theme to each one. A little bit different to what you've seen here at Holden House before maybe when we've done falconry displays. But the raptor exotics element, certainly initially, is gonna see when we can, us do talks and displays in amongst those falconry displays with something else. Now you know I love my snakes, but what you also know is I'm passionate about British wildlife. So I'd like to let you and your kids meet some of our captive bred slow worms or Maybe, maybe rats. We love rats here. We keep rats and we take them to schools. And you know, we've got a house here that's, well, we haven't, but there's a house here, holding me house, that's got such history. So we can look at the historical aspects of things. And I think rats, black and brown, will fit into there pretty well, as well as the falconry. Moving along, of course, Moving along into the future, so remember at the moment the zoo license is just so we can open as we are more than seven days a year. But moving along, ooh, ooh. we're not going to have lions and tigers, of course not. But well, I'll tell you what's in my head, come on. So over the next few weeks, couple of months, fingers crossed, Jackie, Georgia and I are hoping to move house. Um, so you can imagine we've got businesses that we've, we've got through struggle through the last 12 months we've got everything kicking off here getting ready for spring we're moving house i can tell you now well i'll just cream them but the extra on my hands and face talk about a flare up through stress i think my fingers will fall off like a leper at any rate soon but i've got animals at home and when you've got animals of tropical fish or anything moving house oh they just add to the stress and worry um we'll sort it for sure but what i have got is various things like my Catch red toads, slow worms, I've got eyed lizards, I've got pool frogs, we've got uh, mad wood newts, things that usually live outside, they're going to have nowhere to go. So, this lovely bit of item here that came our way a few months ago, you may remember. I'm just in here now thinking how I'll put it in a sunny spot, off you to the public, how I can set it out for those, those amphibians at least. I probably won't put the eyed lizards in here because they get big and they'll eat everything else, but an outdoor enclosure, that's what we're sort of gonna put together in here. Gets them out of my hair, gives them some open space. 
and that kind of leads to, to thinking and, and, the, and the future plans. So in a perfect world, when everything gets back on its feet, the country gets back on its feet, the businesses are generating their own income once again. Of course, with a zoo license, what we'd like to do is really look at, a, again, not lions and tigers. Do you know what? I find them really boring anyway. You can go and see them anywhere. And what you can't do is take your kids into the English countryside and see if they can spot a tiger. But what we can enthuse you to do is to take your kids into the English countryside, look, listen, search, find and learn about our wonderful native wildlife here in Britain. So if I can have enclosures with polecats, giant ferret-like things to you, or indeed slow worms or just common lizards that people can look onto in an outdoor enclosure up close and view them for themselves how fantastic they can get a glimpse of our british wildlife they can look at them but they can also go away and find them for themselves so i'd like to think in amongst the birds of prey over the next two or three years maybe there'll be other enclosures tucked away have a look around in the wildlife garden here remember this is just a junk area that we've opened up I can see some naturalised enclosures squeezed between those trees for sure. Who knows? I've got a friend that rescues hedgehogs. Can, you know, if you've got a, maybe a wild disabled hedgehog that maybe isn't fit to go back to the wild, but tame, that we can show children. Do you know what? I meet adults now that have never seen a British hedgehog. How crazy is that? So watch this space. Keep an eye on the vlogs because we'll announce on the vlogs and the Facebook pages when we're allowed to open, when we've got our licence in place. Um, so remember, going back to that zoo license thing, this is how antiquated it is. Two week, two months, we have to put adverts in a local and national paper. That's what it's the law. We have to do that. Two months before we even apply for a license, and when we do that, we've got to send a letter to the local council that says, "Guess what? In two months, we're going to come to you again and apply." How crazy! We're going to tell them that in two months we're going to apply. We're going to apply for a license, and then who knows how slowly the cogs turn at the council? I don't know eventually when we've got everything just right the vet checks are done we have our zoo license we'll be open more often at the weekends to the public keep on this space and the facebook pages for that if you're a regular um, experience day guest of ours you'll know the selling point here is that you're not on extra we're not a zoo that makes a bid on the side from experiences no the experiences have always been a standalone centerpiece of what we do here at icarus falkery don't worry about that because those days run weekdays. Remember, we're only looking to open up at the weekends. And if we're open up at weekends to the public, that's when the public are around. It still means our fantastic hands-on experience days with Birds of Prey aren't affected by crowds of people. So hopefully a win-win for everyone and we'll offer something to everyone that's fascinated and interested in Birds of Prey, wildlife around the world and British wildlife. And of course, don't forget the fantastic grounds of Holmby House. That's where we're set. So the ticket price, which will eventually be set when we get to open, will include looking around all the lovely house gardens. And as part of that, you'll wind your way in and through the Falkery Centre. And the future dream for sure is for us to do maybe three displays a day, entertaining, educational, and down the road somewhere, we might have a few niche enclosures because those talks and displays, one of them a day for sure, is going to be all about some super wildlife that's not birds of prey. Watch this space. Hope you've enjoyed the vlog. Check back for the next one next week and see what videos there are coming up in the week in between the vlogs. Like and subscribe. Cheers. Say bye to the vlog. <laughs>